I mean, what's interesting is you talk there about uh, the the fact that, that, that you know the film has uh, political relevance and all that sort of stuff, but it, but it also has elements of kind of you know the gross out comedy. So it is on on the one hand, it's like a kind of strange collision of the sort of humour of American Pie. There's something about Mary with the sort of media satire of Wag the Dog, and of course it's co-written by Liz Hanna, who was Golden Globe nominated for the Post. So I mean, you can see where all this sort of stuff comes from. And at the very beginning, we meet Seth Rogen as Fred Flosky, who is in in uh, infiltrating a neo-Nazi group and very, very early on he falls out, jumps out of a window, bang, onto the floor below. So you kind of, okay, fine, you know, we, we've got that stuff and you talked about the falling downstairs stuff. And he works for a radical publication which is uh, bought out by this kind of Murdoch Maxwell-like, you know, media mogul, played un- by Andy Serkis in a manner that is even more unrecognisable than totally. Gollum, frankly. Totally. I mean, I even you told me and I even, I was like three scenes in for, oh, wait, because that, you know, that's, that's Andy Serkis. And then the whole the, the nub of the story is that on the one hand, they're the odd couple, they're chalk and cheese. He's, you know, flailing around and anarchic and all over the place and schlubby. She, on the other hand, is kind of uh, controlling, completely in control. She had this idealistic youth. Now she's become a career politician. She sees, sees a chance to run for president. She sleeps standing up with her eyes open what do you got micro napping that's weird that yeah but that's you know but that's it's a it's a good gag and it's a kind of and an awful lot of the time with this kind of comedy it basically comes down to do you find the central couple funny in their interaction together do you like them do you like what happens when they're together and the answer is in this case yes i mean i laughed more in long shot than I have in many uh, comedies recently, and I, I really, I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Because I'd asked you beforehand, and you'd sort of told me the, the sort of, you know, well, partly something about Mary, partly, you know, yeah. wag the dog, funny out. and gross, out. yeah, which didn't, which, I, and there are bits of it that I that I like more than other bits of it, but I did consistently laugh all the way through. Firstly, we know that Seth Rogen can do this stuff in his sleep because that kind of clever schlub figure is something that he's parlayed over a number of movies. Charlie Thron's um, uh, performance is different because although she has definitely done comedy before, I mean, you know, she was in Woody Allen films. She's done the 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 the, the Reitmans with uh, Diablo Cody writing, which although they're kind of they're dramedy, that horrible word, they're dramas with comedic elements. She's really funny, and the reason she's really funny is that she understands how to play straight. And how to, you know, she is a, but she, but you don't immediately think of comedy when you think of her. I mean, actually, probably nowadays you think of action because Mad of, Max, yeah, anatomic, anatomic blonde, and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So you, what you get is the the kind of combination of the things. You know, you get the yuck yuck factor, but you also get something else, which is that you you like their characters, you like what happens to them together. Um, there, I mean, there's all the sort of surrounding comedy about the fact that she works for a president who's a TV star who then becomes president. President, but actually what he really wants is to break into films and everyone makes a joke about guys oh, very hard to break into films the only two people that have done it are george Cl-. there's a very good joke about whether or not jennifer aniston is now a mo- is she though is she or is she and there's also a terrific gag in which jeremy piven formerly a guest on this show is the nub of a very very uh, sharp gag which i enjoyed enormously uh can we talk a little bit more after the news yes, i feel yes, there's yes. more to say um, I think Osha Jackson Jr. as the sidekick is really, really in, uh, enjoyable. Quite often, those kind of sidekick roles um, seem sort of underwritten and underdeveloped. But there is this lovely thing that his friend has become fantastically successful. And when he, when he turns up at his business, he says, you know, oh, something terrible's happened to me. I've lost my job. And his friend says, that's it, fine. OK, well, we're just cancelling the afternoon. He says, you're allowed to do that. He says, look at, look at, the, look at the office I'm in. This says, I mean, he says it in rather more fruity language. Yes, fruity language. <laughs> that, uh, that, that I am allowed to. So I like that very much. I did think that, that Andy Serkis was terrific. And it's great because it... Rem- it reminded me, again, that thing about, you know, in America, they call them character actors. Here we call them actors. Very good. Meaning, you know, somebody who looks and appears wholly different between films. It's not to do with being buried under a ton of makeup. It's to do with being a, a, a completely different person, a completely different character, because that is what acting does. And uh, worth pointing out that although Andy Serkis and the Imaginarium are, the, are at the absolute cutting edge of, you know, digital acting as he said himself when he was on the show it's all acting isn't it you know and he is a really really fine actor i was thinking when i suddenly clocked that that's who it was and i was thinking it's amazing if you put that performance next to his performance as ian jury in sex and drugs and rock and roll i mean it's unrecognizable um so the i mean the headline of it all is that i laughed 
much more than I expected that I was going to. Sometimes I kind of laugh slightly guiltily, thinking it's a crass joke, but I'm still going to laugh at it. Sometimes I laugh because I thought it was it was satirically pointed, and there are, and it kind of dovetails with my overriding view of politics. I mean, I do think, you know, the, the, the gags about a TV star being in the White House just being concerned only about their ratings was funny. And I also like the fact that there's that, there's this, the central story is that she has become successful, but she might have lost sight of the thing that made her, you know, so idealistic uh, as a, you know, a, as a youth, as a teenager. And through this kind of, you know, this shambolic, uh, interaction with with Fred Flasky that what she what she remembers is the reason that she got into doing this in the first place I mean it's it's a film with a it is a very benevolent film isn't it it's a film which likes the characters and its heart is in the right place even when sometimes it is waving its bottom in your face yes and it is and (laughs) you know it deserves its 15 certificate oh yeah, yeah, yeah no question and you and people of all ages will enjoy it however I would say don't go with your teenage offspring Oh no no it's um, you know it's there is, when, when we said your own age. when we said there is gross out american pie something about mary kind of elements there are yes. I mean, you know they're very they, they are they're they are both you know in 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 america they, there's that phrase yuck yuck which means laughs you know yuck yuck is a form of laughter it's also yuck 